about uh, JBI. Uh, we uh, started our acceleration program in 2012. So far we've had five batches, uh, 50 startups. Uh, we have some statistics about the first three batches. Uh, 26 businesses accelerated, 21 still operating. We invested uh, around 1 million uh, and the total portfolio is worth around 40 million. And we are running um, an application round of six, uh, six batch, which is starting in March. Uh, we've been pretty selective. We take 4% of our applicants and um, we provide for some less than $25,000. Uh, we take 5 to 15%, you know, around 89% of applicants. So that's what we are doing. The first thing I want to talk about is the difference between uh, an accelerator and an incubator. For the last few years, there has been a lot of confusion between those two terms. Usually, people talk about accelerators and incubators interchangeably, um, but there is a difference. Uh, here you can see this graph made by uh, Professor Bilal at MIT, and it shows three lines. So the line A basically uh, demonstrates how incubators work. Uh, he was getting to an incubator, and the incubator is usually a working space with um, some support from the system and some services like legal, accounting, uh, marketing, and teams um, get to the same stage and then they go to a platform. Accelerating program is uh, very different from that. It's time bound. Usually it's around three months. It can be a little bit longer for enterprise programs for foundation, but three months we have done with it. Uh, it's pretty intense, it's very structured. Uh, teams have deliverables, you know, they have people checking meetings, they have uh, uh, very intense management support, they have to meet customers from day one. It's actually expected that teams meet these customers and get some information, some evidence that, that their business model has a potential before the program, so that when they apply, they can show, guys, this is what we are doing, uh, this is our evidence. Uh, and I will talk about this a little bit later. Uh, accelerators, uh, unlike most of the incubators, have still the game. Uh, they provide investment and they take equity. So it's in everybody's interest to uh, make sure that the team grows in a large, scalable, successful uh, Accelerators take teams in four points. The typical one bridge, it's around 10 companies, 10 per normally. And this wedge is um, very connected. Teams help a lot with each other, uh, they share experience, and it's a large part of the program. And by the end of the program, accelerators have a demo day, where teams present the goal stage, they present to investors uh, for good accelerator programs, the discovery is more than 100 to 500 investors. And, uh, Majority uh, of teams get single lesson. The reason of 
entering with some greater is the different value. And it happens because they bring together three kinds of capital. Intellectual capital, financial capital, and so on. All three parts are vital, although it's already a problem. Uh, intellectual capital is all of the knowledge you will need to build your business. They have mentorship. Uh, structured program is very important because if you are um, if you're a startup and it's your first experience and you work from home, you are very detached from from community, from other people. You feel a little bit lost. The like corporate environment, you don't have uh, you don't have the vulnerabilities. You don't know whether it's whether it's succeed or not, and it's. It gets light and harder. So accelerators come to that. Accelerators provide just in time advice. Uh, different teams are strong in uh, different ways. Some of them are in marketing, some of them are in technology, uh, some understand the legal and accounting side of the business, but it's basically impossible to have all the knowledge. And that's where accelerator comes in. So program managers and small managers uh, that help to bring this knowledge just in time when the team needs it. And of course, every university has a library. In the same way, every accelerator has a lot of resources, articles, books, the place with different documents. Financial capital uh, means access to investors. Uh, it's not just a large pool of investors, and investors uh, investors work closely with accelerators because they see uh, high quality teams, so they know that somebody made a selection for them. So investors value that. So they come in large numbers, and it's uh, it's accelerated role to. Uh, do some due diligence on investors and make sure that those who come uh, do not uh, do not harm startups. Uh, they are not predatory, and they can help with their networks and their experience. So it's two way selection. Uh, there is a little um, a little bit of money provided by an accelerator. Usually, it varies from twenty thousand to forty thousand. Can be Singapore dollars, Australian dollars, American dollars, uh, but it's around that. And uh, accelerators um, absorb across both can be space, can uh, internet access, and small things like that. But probably the most important part of accelerators social capital. It's all the matters for usually. Um, also, serial uh, entrepreneurs with lots of experience. They've been there, they've done that, they know how to, they, they understand the challenges of building a business from scratch, and they can help. Investors help uh, entrepreneurs uh, by showing that, guys, if you want to get an investment, if you want to go past the next stage of your business, this is kind of things you want to see. So they help this alignment to make sure that by the end uh, of the program, at the demo day, teams tell the story that the investors will fulfill. Access to potential customers and partners. Usually all people in the network are connected to someone who might be very helpful to start up. And it's network of alums. All the teams in your batch when they go into the accelerator uh, can be helpful, but also all of those who go through an accelerator, who went to uh, deal with accelerator before, they create this network that is very supportive. And uh, very often it's an international network, especially if you start in Southeast Asia. Uh, individual markets are typically quite small, so teams need to, to go, they need to go international. And the next guys who follow them, the next wedge, they can tap into the 
exclude the possible wise and possible connections. So it's very helpful. Just a couple of numbers. Uh, Jeff Gagev ran this uh, little research. Do you know what percentage of teams get investment at what, uh, what amount? Seeing dollars, um, there's 5% difference between seeing dollars and Australian dollars now. And usually, uh, teams uh, give up around 18% of average team percent of the equity to get some investment. Uh, as compared to the teams that haven't been taken, uh, we know that 4% uh, of applicants to JBI that didn't take investment. Other is new. Uh, this number average to investment it's uh, average to investment in uh, Southeast Asia. The number is provided by early capital. So this is kind of value that uh, accelerators provide that they help you to get higher valuation, bigger large larger sum of money, and they the risk your start of dramatically, you're much more likely to build a viable business if you're part of this And uh, I'm pretty sure that for uh, most of accelerators, of accelerators around the world, the numbers are the same, they might be even better. So please go on to accelerators to learn more about that. So if, you, if you decide to join an accelerator, there are some things uh, that are important to understand why you might be screened out in the application process. Uh, this is what we call hard red flags and soft red flags. Sole founders are not taken into the program because um, of, of two main reasons. One reason is that investors don't typically invest in Things with one founder. Uh, it's too risky. Usually, businesses with sole founders do not survive. Uh, we, uh, we've seen in our own experience that if one person joins an accelerator, he or she cannot perform. The program is too intense. Uh, they have to build business expertise, understand the market and customers. And they wish to go to It's virtually impossible to do everything that's from the boundary that's already the problem if you're just alone. More technical expertise. Accelerators work for high tech software businesses um, because it's software is very scalable. You can go from one user to million users. Business. Uh, so it's a, it's a technology business. If there is no technology person in your team, it's very hard to manage projects. No English is a big issue in Southeast Asia in general. Probably it won't be issues. Uh, but we've seen many teams applying to accelerator, they can barely speak. And uh, it's very prohibitive for us because <coughs> the whole problem is in English, but it's also part of the experiment. If they want to build a global business, they need to speak English. And it will share a folder usually shows that uh, there is no team, which is one person with the name. Teams that are not coachable. Uh, one of the biggest challenges uh, of accelerator working with teams is that uh, teams might be very attached to their ideas, but the market doesn't support it. Customers outside may tell them, guys, you're not going to buy what you're selling. And uh, teams will not listen. So being able to feel to define the viable business model requires being responsible. That's an essential for all people. And yes, some things lie about their experience of the product, whatever. 
Why is for us? Like that. Okay. Yes, Andy. Uh, so, red flags are much milder. Uh, if uh, all the founders are not present at the interview, we kind of ask them how do they work. It's, it's a simple thing to ask. Uh, if they're not punctual, we need things that can be uh, it's, it's very hard to do the business. It's very challenging. If they cannot do simple things, how can they do it hard? Uh, English uh, has been mentioned, if it's four, it's just other. Uh, other commitments. Uh, what we've seen that sometimes teams um, are trying to do something that for them is a side project. They have a daytime job or they have another big business and they just want to test something uh, by going through this problem. For us, it means that usually they uh, are not ready to pay the resources, their time, and the probability of growing into a large business in short. And not more experience of working together. Co founders' contact is one of the main reasons for things to happen. So we want to prevent them. If the team doesn't have large issues, uh, then we look deeper in their, uh, whether they, they are the people that solve the problem. And we look at certain times. Team idea and uh, compatibility between uh, the accelerated problem. In the end, we want to see uh, the main expertise, the knowledge of what they are doing. Uh, let me give you an example. A few years ago, we had an applicants of MBA male co-founders who wanted to uh, build a women uh, shoe store. And we asked them, have you ever tried to buy women shoes? And they said no. For us, it means that probably they do not understand the business deeply enough to be successful. So we want, uh, we want to see uh, experience, we want to see balanced skills, uh, what we call uh, hacker, hipster, and hustler. Hacker is a person with technical expertise. Hustler is a person uh, responsible for business development, for connecting to potential customer, understanding them, and making sure that uh, the product the company is building will actually solve Problem. Um, and hipster is a person that um, connects both expertise. Hipsters are responsible for user experience and uh, user design for interface. So they design this. Uh, we want to see a team that wants to uh, actually build business that will bring revenue. This market focus. It's not always the case. Sometimes teams uh, go into a non profit market, and it's a very nice area to go, but uh, unfortunately, investors are not very passionate about it because it doesn't provide the investment. Considering idea, we, uh, we want to see that the idea is at the right time. It's not too early for the market, or not too late for, for the market. And we want to see a uh, original business model. Quite often it happens that the team comes to us to pitch their idea, and we realize that we heard about the same idea many times. Uh, unfortunately, not all the teams um, understand the domain enough, understand their competition, listen to others. Quite often it happens if they're in the sales mode. So they are, they are not ready to share, they are not, they are not asking for feedback. When they are more open, 
they can heal the souls that there is someone else who is doing that. So we want to avoid that. And compatibility with uh, an accelerator program means that different accelerator programs have different focuses. GMD has focus on Asia. Uh, it's a software accelerator. Uh, but considering um, industry verticals, it is pretty much open. It can be big data, it can be education, it can be healthcare, and so on. There are more focus accelerators. There are health, healthcare accelerators, there are fintech accelerators. So maybe for you, it's, uh, if you're very focused, it's better to apply for those things. Uh, there are hardware accelerators. So we do not take hardware because our um, problem cannot bring enough money for entrepreneurs to use them. Uh, there are some other notes, and these notes are from uh, Global Accelerating Network. Global Accelerating Network is a network uh, started by Techstars, which is considered the second most accelerator in the world, uh, a few years ago. And now it comprises uh, 50 accelerators around the world. They uh, have conference calls quite regularly, and this is the loss from one of the uh, conference calls. And basically, you see uh, that when they take teams into their programs, so it's a shared knowledge of 50 accelerators from around the world, it's again it's the same kind of points. They want to see the right team. They want to see uh, the team attracting for investors. Uh, they want to see the capability of talking to people. And talking to people means getting feedback and saying the customers and being able to sell the product later. Uh, right on the market. They want to see the uh, uh, right motivation. Motivation is important because uh, if you're too passionate driven, it might mean that you're very, very much attached to your idea. And it might mean that you're not cultural. And you may spend too much time doing something that market doesn't need. If you're focused only on money, then it gives you a lot of passion. And the entrepreneurship journey is very it's quite long and hard. And teams need perseverance to go through them. So the combination of those two extremes, the balance of them, is, uh, is optimal. Uh, if you have some traction before the start of the problem, if you have first customers, especially for you, if somebody pays you to solve the problem, you, you will be far ahead of other um, they want to see a minimum viable product, they want to see something, some kind of concept of the product realized with some software or design or something. Because if, if you don't have that, you are the only one so you, you won't have time to um, achieve all the milestones by the end of the product. Um, they want to see the market risk high potential, otherwise, again, investors are not interested. And again, fit of accelerator and what you're doing at the moment. Uh, a few more tips. Uh, I would like to focus on that. I took just last week, I talked to a program manager from Techstars, and these are three tips he gave to me. Uh, for a team to be successful in the application process, he suggests that you apply early. If you apply early, you, you are way more visible. Even if you are not ready to provide all the information, you are one of 10 other teams, or 20 other teams, but not by hour. So it's better to get attention early, show your team, show how you communicate with your founders, and show product. Explain what you are. These are kind of uh, investment trends that are important for accelerators because they want to 
make their business model work. And the business model of an accelerator means accelerator invests and expects to you that the keys that sorry the investment will have exit. So the value will be realized and it is the return on investment. So they are interested in this kind of things. Uh, the trends that we see uh, is that uh, first it's a lot about software. It's just a little hardware device that will be copied by other people very fast. But if you build on top of hardware stack, if you build a software stack that brings a nice user experience, nice customer experience, then the device will have much more value and then you will have uh, advantage over your financial competitors. Uh, surprisingly, investors want to see boring startups. So all the funny flashy things like social networks, dating sites, messaging applications, pretty much it's all been done. If you, if you come again to an accelerator or you have another dating application, most likely, uh, you won't get much of attention. But if you're building B2B enterprise software that solves a problem for a large market, but this market is not visible to the common audience, but people who are in the industry understand that, uh, you will have a lot of interest from uh, investors because they want to see that. They know that there are a lot of very serious problems you know, in the community. E commerce is still, um, there are big checks signed by investors to e commerce startups, but there is a lot of communication. So if you are very passionate about that, try it, but please be aware that there will be many other people trying to. Uh, there are new trends for hardware and internet of things, but again, it's it should be hardware with a software step that helps to it helps devices to communicate between each other, collect information, analyze information, and be controlled in a way that it helps humans to automate some of the processes and make their experience better. Uh, solutions for multi-sided markets platforms. Uh, the problem with multi-sided markets is chicken and egg. You have different audiences. Airbnb, for example, or Uber. You have apartment owners, and you have drivers. You have, uh, drivers. You have drivers, and you have uh, passengers. Who am I going to bring the first? Is there a too few of one the audience, another won't be interested. So how do you solve that? If you are able to solve that, or if you if you have some kind of expertise in this domain, accelerators will be interested. Because once you solve it, you will have a great advantage. And healthcare. Healthcare is um, is the area where there are many problems. People are very, um, very emotional about it. They're very involved. The problems are very important. There are many stakeholders. So it's a hot area. And you'll be evolving very fast in your next year. Uh, there is um, a caution. Uh, what you don't have to do, but why, why you don't, uh, don't need to apply? If you have some of those points, if you just need money, then accelerators are not the best way to go. Usually, people look at um, what accelerator provides directly through the financial support twenty-five, thirty thousand dollars versus state, and they think that's too much. For very little money. Uh, the money is not the value that accelerators bring to 
if you have some money, probably the best way to look for grants uh, from the government or some other problems. Uh, can be, they can be with more money, don't take any equity, might not be as helpful as it's already. So it depends on the priority. If you have a lot of experience, if you build businesses already, maybe it's already it's, maybe it, it won't give you as much value as um, first time or stage of the If you don't have a scalable business model. So writers are for software, um, scalable startups. If you want to start a store, a shop, or if you want to just build some kind of device without much software attached to accelerators. Um, you have to be committed. Uh, you have to be, you have to be open to sharing, as I mentioned before, and you have to want to build a large business. Uh, if you, if you have any kind of doubts whether accelerator is the right thing for you, uh, there are many pre accelerator problems. At JBI, uh, there's a problem before JBI Discover. There are many other problems, like certain variety, that uh, teach you how to uh, look at some discovery, how to connect with potential customers and get uh, the understanding if you have any pain points. If you want to be accepted, if you want to be accepted in the Clone Accelerator, uh, understand yourself and your team. So what right? Why do you care and talk about doing things like that? Um, are you able to work with, with your team? It's a very long journey. It's, um, it's quite a hard journey. It might be very uh, demanding of the team. I have my own experience of starting business with my brother. And uh, we still do not talk each other. Because <laughs> when, when you have a very close relation uh, with, with your founder, at some point you might ask yourself, what do you love in the world? Do you value the business or do you value the relationship? If there is a problem, you are kind of Are you going to talk openly about the problem? Or you prefer to just kind of hold back and say, I will, I will better do not make a problem. It's, it's, it's a challenge. So choose your partner's life. Understand your customers. Just before building a product, before before committing, before uh, saying to all your family, I'm going to do this, I'm going to build one billion business, just make sure that people have this pain, this problem that you want to solve. Um, because otherwise you might have a lot of pressure for the family asking, so how is it going? I'm doing something, how do you feel about it? When I want to take your first feeling, understand the market. It's again about customers, understand your competition. Uh, it's most, um, one of the challenges we see during that vacation is that applicants try to copy something that already exists. Just make sure you avoid that. Uh, business model. Uh, when you have assumption about what you are doing, when you have assumption about um, what customers you want, when you have assumption about how much they're going to pay for it, make sure it's your assumptions. If you don't know for sure, go and talk. Try experimenting, 
there are many ways to experiment. You can read about them, there are launch pages, there are different kinds of designs, uh, wireframes. Just make sure that you know what you know and what you want. And test your most recent assumptions. Very important, do the diligence on accelerators. Accelerators are different. And um, there's a big trend right now starting an accelerator. Um, so I would um, recommend doing the following things. Uh, read about an accelerator, uh, talk to alums. Usually, all the information is available. Just send them a message saying, okay, guys, you've been to an accelerator, I want to fly. Please share your experience. What's it worth? What are the best things about it? What are the worst things about it? Would you recommend? Uh, another thing is to actually do due diligence on the lungs. If you have a chance to uh, meet this one of the lungs, with a few lung teams, uh, ask them questions about what they are doing. Ask them about whether they understand their customers, whether they understand their domain, and then say for You will see immediately if the team is very clear about things like that. Uh, then they understand their business. It's not always the case. I talked to a few teams that have been through accelerated programs, and um, uh, sometimes they Cannot explain why, why their business is going, why their business is stuck, or what kind of directions they should choose, and why they're focusing on specific markets. And it's uh, very helpful to understand the basics. Lean Canvas, so all those words are very well known in entrepreneurship domain, but uh, it's, it, it's not about words, it's about what stands behind them. So Lean Canvas is a way to have this one clear picture about what your business model is, what's your customer, what's the problem, what solution you offer. Uh, customer discovery, again, nice words, but what stands behind them is a structured process to get evidence uh, from your potential buyers and understand so, early adopters means uh, if you understand your early adopters, you understand what is the way to start your business, where you should focus. Because as a startup, you have very, very limited resources. You cannot, um, you cannot afford going to the whole potential market. You should make your first sales very quickly and at the lowest cost. That's why early adopters are very important. Traction means you have first customers preferably serving you. Minimum viable product means that you have a product that solves the single but most important problem. Cost of um, um, customer acquisition costs. And lifetime value of a customer. These are two very important metrics that um, will help you to understand whether you have business or not. Lifetime value of a customer should be higher than the cost of customer acquisition. If that's the case, then your business will grow. If it's not the case, then probably it's a wrong business or you have to work more to build a product that will make it cheaper for you to acquire customers and solve their problems. Launch pages, again, that's a way to test whether your product is going to be successful. That's kind of structure of the pitch we are using. Uh, it has opening problem, solution, traction, market, business model, team, vision, what you're asking for, and closing. This is the pitch for investors. 
So this is your endpoint. Uh, the only thing I would like to talk about here is when you when you apply an accelerator, when you uh, hope your potential investor start with the problem. Don't start with code. Don't start with functionality. Start with the problem and explain why what you are doing should be done. Why it exists. And the kind of work about accelerators is whether going uh, whether go to general accelerator or vertical accelerator. Uh, general accelerator takes um, teams from different domains. As I mentioned, healthcare, uh, education, big data, and so on. Vertical accelerators can be team tech, can be mobility, can be healthcare, and so on. There are pros and cons. Uh, corporate partners um, supporting a vertical accelerator give you access to distribution expertise, sometimes laboratories, uh, and they allow for faster exits. The main problem with vertical accelerators, not for all of them, but uh, they, they tend to, to have, is that they don't want these rapid solutions. Their idea is to extend their product line. So if you want to build a business that is doing something that may move this big corporate partner out of business, or harm the corporate partner, they won't support them. So probably it should be done separately, not using the accelerator, uh, not using the accelerator. And uh, corporations take sometimes long time to Uh, could you speak louder, please? Could you introduce what general accelerator is? Mm -hmm. The difference between general accelerator. Okay. Uh, general accelerators, uh, if you've heard about quite a matter text terms, our accelerators, they take uh, usually software companies, but companies not focused on a specific industry. So their wage can be quite mixed. So companies like Dropbox, Uber, Airbnb can be one wage. But for example, if there is a vertical accelerator uh, with a focus on hospitality, with a focus on hospitality, so Airbnb could go there, but not Uber or not Dropbox. Hospitality would be mostly about either hotel management or helping people if they go overseas to stay have a nice experience. So, so that's the hmm? um, I can give you more examples. Uh, there is this next accelerator. It's a vertical accelerator, I would say in media than we do. Mainly, and it's sponsored by Disney. So they want to see uh, solutions that will help uh, Disney operations to be more in uh, Barclays Accelerator is focused on FinTech. Uh, Startup Bootcamp FinTech Accelerator is also focused on FinTech. Uh, the difference is that uh, uh, Barclays Accelerator uh, it's supported by one corporate partner, while a uh, certain group can be supported by a different company. Thank you. Okay. If you take the picture of uh, this, the, these are very useful resources that will be helpful for you, uh, whether you apply to an accelerator. And if you want to have the whole presentation, please give me your email address and I will send it.
Ela tem que ir para ele para a sua I have spoken to a lot of different Sandrians in Silicon Valley, and a lot of what you're hearing sounds very different from what I'm hearing over there. So I'm trying to, I, I also know I understand why you say what you're saying. So, what kind of accelerators would this kind of information be useful for? Uh, can you share the differences? Um, so, you may have mentioned initially that if you are going to disrupt a very large organization, you shouldn't go for an accelerator. If you want to disrupt the life, yeah, is, is that correct? I believe you said that. If you're going to affect a large organization, you'd rather not take the accelerator. To a very yeah. important center. What? To a very important center. A very accelerator. Yes. So um, I, I, I talked to, to a few people from a uh, vertical accelerator. And the reason why, um, uh, why you might have want to go to a vertical accelerator if you have a disruptive solution is that Vertical uh, partners don't want to see the well, So I, I do know specifically a few examples of vertical accelerators encouraging disruption in their respective fields. Um, another example you may have mentioned is like white combinator is a software event focus, which does not add up today because white combinator has actually invested in a nuclear fusion in the company. So you you can you want to say that previously that incubators and accelerators focused primarily on software. I but I don't think that's an accurate assumption of where things are going now. So that's if you want to talk about differences, I can put a few more, but I'm trying to understand what kind of accelerator uses those metrics you would put. Because I kind of, my other stuff is for highly disruptive innovation. So we're talking about stuff where if you're asking me whether there's a graph show how much money there is, it's zero. There is no graph. Uh, one of my friends, when Sarah talked about, she built a next generation landmine detector. And her business model is actually opening up all the areas that have been affected by landmines. It has a little bit of opportunity. But if you ask me how much money is research going into landmine detection, zero. So if you're telling me that I have to follow a graph, say there's money for involvement, then is that the kind of accelerator I want to be in? So I'm just trying to understand the difference. Mm -hmm. So let, let me start from uh the beginning of the message. You mentioned white, white combinator. Yes. White combinator explicitly wants disruptive innovation. Absolutely. White combinator uh, recently uh, moved into uh, hardware and they announced it. And white combinator is uh, now supporting the personal profit. Uh, that's, uh, these are trends, but I wouldn't say they're. Uh, it's not uh, a common phenomenon, and usually our hardware accelerators are separate. So, uh, regarding your second question, uh, can you frame it in one sentence? So, the second question is regarding what my friend is doing. Is that correct? Do you guys know what the second question you're referring to? I don't know, there's a long period where you're describing something. Yes, um, you may have mentioned that accelerators take companies in where they can see investment trends. So, like if I do an e-com startup, there's investment trends for e-commerce. What kind of accelerator would not be using such information to assess startups? So, if you could kind of go into a business that has no track record. Exactly, yeah, like my friend did landmine detection. So, you could use track record of that. Um, I would put it this way. Accelerators will be interested to hear new stuff. If, you, if your friend is doing something that hasn't been done before, and they can prove that there is an opportunity, accelerators will be interested. Unless it, uh, it is in direct conflict with their, with their focus. Okay. Trends, uh, like, trends is like, is like the dog wags the tail, the tail doesn't wag the dog. Trends are like, you know, it's in response to behaviors, but they don't even technically drive their input. It's not a case by case basis. It's, it's more of an overall. I certainly agree. You're right. It's a case by case basis. And I wouldn't argue with that. I'm trying to understand what kind of service will choose one action over the other. 
is formal from this time to so I'll go at a I'll compound an additional example. So I have a disruptor uh, concept that I feel may be disruptive. Now it's disruptive, let's assume the manufacturing industry. And I have a vertical accelerator in manufacturing because mm -hmm. by definition manufacturing can be directly linked to a vertical accelerator. And the concept is disruptive. But you're saying that the that type of vertical accelerator will not be accepted, accepted to disruptive challenges. So I think that it doesn't say that. It's generally it's not it's not it's not it's not it's for example, it's a Disney one. Disney's not going to choose something and incubate something and say that's going to destroy Disney. I mean, it's just acceleration. Okay, so I would, I would put it this way. Uh, manufacturing is a broad domain. Okay. Uh, That's just an example, please. Yes. Yes. But it's very, uh, it's very important to analyze how, how it would work. So manufacturing is a broad domain. We might have a general accelerator within this domain because it's broad. Because for, for, for example, the general accelerators I talk about are in software. When it comes to manufacturing, the whole model would work differently. Uh, but it's broad enough, it doesn't necessitate uh, support of corporate partners. When it's focused, uh, for, for um, accelerators, it's easier uh, to bring corporate partners to work because they sponsor it, uh, but they give their own agenda. So for manufacturing, if you can think about an accelerator that is focused on manufacturing, but it's all kinds of uh, startups, all kinds of solutions that can be disrupted in this domain, it's uh, perfectly feasible. So there is no conflict. Yes. Uh, can I answer the question? I will chat later. Okay. Um, can you tell me more about the, uh, the uh, companies involved? Like, are you based here in Sydney? Are you looking for some companies to apply to your accelerator program? Or do you need more companies? Uh, we are based in Singapore. Uh, our applicants are from, maybe from Southeast Asia. About only 10% are from Singapore because it's a very small market. Uh, also, applicants from Europe, from Australia, and New Zealand. So, my uh, goal here is mainly to share our experience about um, applicants, what they are looking for, uh, give advice. I'm very proud about our. But unfortunately the, unfortunately, the application round for our next batch is, I think it's already closed. So I'm probably not going to advertise to the world. Okay. The name, KTI. I know what it stands for, but is that really a mistake? Authority of Singapore. And they realized that when they put the government, probably they need to have some politically correct name. So that's how you have to digital into the rest. That's more fabulous, that story. Yeah. That's what we need. And it's actually <laughs> fair, I've had programs that 
but asking for money. Yeah. And they have you have the word like shit in your name, like, hey, I get shit done. I'm like, I can't give you money. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's okay to say GSD, but yeah, yeah, it's, it's tough, tough to do it, especially with government. Yeah. yeah. Any other questions? Okay, thanks everyone. We were just happy with that. I just wanted to say again, thank you very much to Elena for coming out and doing the presentation. Hope you all enjoyed it and learned something. Um, so yeah, finish with your final round of applause.